don't mind have the courtesy of the first human being or human beings and a woman like a woman yes. as a child. And yes, and that someone was Mother Ninki. Okay, and like, um, were, was she the only one? And if no. not, like, not who, but... Yeah, who? That's, that's the real one with that question. Okay. If you go back and read it in tablets, Pharaoh Atumre or Nita Affinity Atumre explains in there how they had birth goddesses. These were be or women, for lack of a better word, okay, that were goddesses of birthing. They gave birth. And it says in there how at first they gave birth to some beings that were crippled. Some were lame. Some had feet coming out their chest. Some had no arms. Some had you know, And these were defects because it was an experiment. This is why all these things are in our genes today. Overstood? And then, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, and like, um, how did they pick these birth goddesses? Or did they volunteer for something? No, Nimki volunteered to carry us. The birth goddesses, that's what they were. They were birth goddesses. Remember, they had a society where you had different beings. You had some that were chancellors, some that were cupbearers, some that were rulers, some that were governors, some that were warriors. This is what you, if you were a birth goddess, unlike today, where you say, well, I want to, when I grow up, I want to be, uh, whatever, you know, whatever, correct? In ancient times, you grew up to be what your parents were. If your mother was a, a doctor, you grew up and you became a doctor. It wasn't about, well, I don't want to be a doctor. Well, then you just don't want to exist because you won't be a doctor. This is how it was. If your parents were a scribe, you grew up to be a scribe. If your father was a great builder, you grew up to be a great builder, or your mother, overstood, and this is how it was in their societies. It wasn't this free-for-all that we have today. This is why Pharaoh Atumre explained a few weeks ago that he has to give us a culture. See, we only want a culture insofar as, okay, we're an NTB, I'm proud, I'm the YPM, we got our little, you know, symbols. But when it comes time to say, okay, now, a part of that culture means you marry who we say you marry. Well, I don't like him. He's not, you know, he's not what I call cute. Well, I don't like her. She's not cute. Well, we ain't talking about cute. We're talking about genetics. He put this in our family guide. It's called eugenics. Genetic breeding. Because if we just breed for cuteness and likability, and that's, that's not to say you should hate the person you would either. You know, I can't stand you. You're genetically okay. <laughs> it's not to say that. <laughs> it's to say that when breeding genetically, we have to start breeding it that the child or the children that are produced from this breeding are of the mental capacity that when the ancient ones come and arrive here, they'll be able to reach them. You've met people that you say, damn, I can't get through to this person. They're like, anybody home? You know, it's, just, it's like a numbness, like a cloud of dumbness that just surrounds their body. Is this true? How do people experience this? You understand? So, and that's because of genetics again. And where they're being raised and their environment. So we had to come out here. This is an experiment. Something like this has never been done in America before. A society that pulls off, creates its own language, has its own culture, its own food, its own music, its own dress, etc., etc., etc. This has never happened before. This is a first. This is why people in town want to stop this. This is why they are, we're not going to give you the seed too. We're going to get it. They want to stop this because they know when this succeeds, and notice we said when, not if. When this succeeds, then what? See, as long as we were saying we were God living in the project, they want to worry. Yeah, you're God. Yeah. Just make sure you pay your gas bill next Wednesday and then clock. Correct? But now when you're standing on fertile ground, with, a, with the master of master teachers, Pharaoh Atumre, amongst us, giving us information, looking at pyramids, looking at statues of the great goddesses and, and gods, or the Nitiru of ancient Kemet or Tamare, looking at your land, listening to your own music. Now, when you say you God, it, well, if you God, or prove you God, look, everybody look behind you. See that big black thing over there? What's that? Say it again. Yeah. Don't be afraid to say it. Yeah. And what do we call it in our language? Yeah. Amir. See that? How many people got their own language? Now that we have that, and you're able to look at that, and they say, well, prove you God. You say, look, if I'm not God, if Pharaoh Atum Ray is not God, then you explain how the heck we get it. And why you haven't. If it's something that anybody could do, then 
know why haven't they done it yet? Overstood? Any other questions? About the graves, um, were they in the town of Gray? Uh, are they still there? Yeah. I've heard that they've been shipped out to Puerto Rico. No. What happens is, underneath every major city in their sewage system, you have different beings from reptilians to different types of greys that are living there. And they, uh, and they use these big cities as uh, abduction grounds. They use big events like uh, baseball games and concerts. At every concert, don't believe this, go check it out. This is something that Pharaoh actually taught us, and we went and checked it for fact. Go check it out. At every concert, somebody turns up missing. Did y'all know that? How many people realize that? That every concert, every major event, somewhere along the line, some child or some adult ends up missing. And so they're using these events, they're using these big cities because they know of that certain mind that's going to be attracted to the bright lights so they can abduct and do genetic manipulation, food, etc. So yes, the greys and the reptilians, they're here. Some are living underground in the sewer systems. Some are in human form walking with you and I. But our problem is, going back to an earlier question that the sister up here asked, is that we're so focused on what we see with these two eyes. So we're looking at somebody's involved with two hands, two legs. Oh, they're a human being. Never getting into, no, I want to know about your genetics. I want to find out more. Jeffrey Dahmer, he looked like a human being. But something about his diet, <laughs> something about the things that he enjoyed tasting, is a little different than most of us. Say most of us because you never know. Somebody in here, you might, you know. You might want to eat people, but most of us, don't have the desire, you don't look at your friend when you're sitting next to them on a train. <laughs> Correct? So something is taking place. Okay? Next question. Um, you said y'all create you created your own language. Yes. Um, I just only started reading the scrolls. Um, it, it is derived from the Arabic? No. It is not. Nawapic, our language Nawapic, is what the the so-called archaeologists refer to as cuneiform. The Latins use the word cuneiform because the word cuneiform simply means wedged shapes. That's not what the language was, that's what it looked like to them. They said, oh, this looks like wedged shapes, we're going to call it cuneiform. But Nawabit is what our descendants or our ancestors who came here, it's the language they spoke when they came to this planet. When you go back in your Bible, in uh, the book of Genesis, when it talks about the Tower of Babel, okay, the language that we were speaking before our tongues or our languages was confounded, as they use in the Bible, was Nawapic. That's what we were speaking. And it, in this day and time, for us to be uh, made ready or made prepared for the return of our descendants, they had to give us our language. So we don't have to, whether I'm in Puerto Rico, and I'm a Nawapian, or I'm in Haiti, and I'm a Nawapian, or I'm in Nigeria, and I'm a Nawapian, or I'm in America as a Nawapian, we all can come together and speak to each other in a language that we all can recognize. And that's a fear that certain individuals have, that we are going to unify, because they know that if we come together, there's nothing we can't do. I don't mean we as in the black man, we as in people. If we come together on a common mind, a way of thinking, a way of doing things, we cannot be stopped. They know this. So they're doing everything in their power to defame our teacher, to lie about him, to lie about our organization, to write all kind of craziness, but they never address the information. They never address the things that we're doing. They can only address hearsay and things that they want people to believe. Understood? Understood. Um, also, one more question. So, I guess all that saying that cuneiform came from pictures being written, mm -hmm. and then the pictures were short, and it's cuneiform, that's a lie. No. Cuneiform was wedge shaped. The original scripts that were used by uh, people on this planet was called pictographs. We didn't use. We didn't use letters. Right? For example, today, if you want to say sun, you'll say this. 
for this. But when we use pictographs, we drew this. 